Oh, morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler. That's Bugsy Malone just in front. And this is episode 162 of Tottenham Walks. Do me a favour, please, guys. If you wouldn't mind obliging, I'd be most appreciative, as always. Hit the like button for me. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I think we're at 250 now. 5,250. Goes up every single day. It's awesome. It's awesome. Really appreciate everyone hanging around. Hit the notification bell if you'd like to see the freshest drops first. And of course, drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's video. I'm going to shout over the wind a little bit. Um, look, this might be a little bit controversial. It might annoy some of you, depending on how you feel about Antonio Conte, his future, his current um, energy, his mindset and whether or not you're going to interpret what I'm saying as being insensitive to his health issues, which I want to say from the start, it's not my intention to come across that way. I wish the man every luck with his recovery, recuperation, and I think it's right and important that he spends some time with his family back at home, which is what he's doing. He released a statement yesterday saying uh, the doctors have advised him basically to stay uh, in Italy with his, with his family. He's not fully recovered. He said in his uh, tweet or Instagram post that you know his desire to get back to help the team, the fans, the players um, forced him back earlier than he should have come back or made him come back earlier than he should have come back and he hasn't felt right since he shouldn't have come back. He rushed himself and now he's under the orders of the doctors decided to stay back in Italy. And look, like I said at the start, absolutely respect that decision. I respect the doctors and I respect him and I want him to be happy, be healthy. And I want him to do the things that he loves. Like I say to you every day, I want you to do the same things. And to me, maybe part of my opinion on this is based on my general feelings towards some of his managerial tendencies you know as you know on my channel i've said a thousand times i prefer or i prioritize watching good football to a higher level than maybe some other fans who want trophies at all costs i've also been consistent ever since i joined the community you know just over a year ago that I've never been a fan of Conte's press conferences. He's an emotional guy who speaks with his heart and there's a lot of volatility in his, in his communications. And sometimes I don't always find them to be beneficial to the players. A perfect example of that is the other day, following the Leicester game, he said that he you know, thinks that some of our players crack under pressure. You know, I'm guessing that's a dig at our defence, which may be true, but I don't think should be voiced in the public domain. I also have, as I'm sure you know, a lot of frustrations with his um, predictability in formations. I've mentioned that a hundred times on this channel. His stubbornness, his lack of willingness to make substitutions early enough to rotate players. You know, I say I said it again yesterday. This notion that you dropped Sonny to the bench once and he comes off the bench and scores a hat-trick was interpreted as a sign to say, never drop him again. You see, he's the best in the business. To me, I have interpreted that as a sign to say, that was an experiment that worked. We should do it more often. And so I don't particularly have much of a strong relationship, strong positive feelings towards a lot of uh, managerial tendencies that he has. I also feel like, and I know this is going to be in contrast to the what was written in his Instagram post, but I also feel like of late his energy and his apparent enjoyness, uh, enjoyment or happiness has been has looked waning to me. I'm not just talking about when he looked gaunt on the touchline 
against Milan and Leicester. I mean, before then, you know, nothing like what it was last season. Moments this season, there were moments when you saw him up for it and pumped. But I think he is someone that is in a mourning process. He's lost three of his closest friends, all that weren't that old and not that much older than him. I think the stress of the maybe the job or his general happiness in life with that whole process may have pay, played a part in his recent gallbladder issues. And I think when that sort of stuff happens, I'd imagine that you you start to contemplate your own mortality and start to think about what's important in life. You know, is your career more important than friends and family? You know, I don't think it is. To some people it is, to some people it isn't, but maybe to some people it was, and then suddenly it's not anymore. And I feel like it's not unreasonable to suggest that, you know, there's a number of factors and influences there that are playing on his mind and whether he is 100% in the game. And I know that you know, that Instagram text suggested that he rushed himself back and therefore, if that's true, then how can the other be true? Well, look, I don't know, you can, just because someone says something, I don't necessarily know how to interpret the difference there, but I can only tell you how I feel about his, his, uh, the, the, way, the way it comes across to me. But that might be influenced, I'll acknowledge, by the fact that I'm not that kind of in love with his uh, style of management anyway. And I also believe that he's not going to be here in the summer. I don't think he'll be here in the summer. Do you? If you think he will be here, or he has a, I don't know, an equal or slightly more than equal chance of him hanging around, then the next thing I'll say will probably irritate you. If, however, you're like me and think that we're treading water and kicking the can down the road to an inevitable passing of company in the summer anyway, then given that he's also going to be out now for what some say is up to eight weeks, which would take us right through until, you know, towards the end of the season, mid-April, late April, is there the need to make him have to worry about coming back? If we think he's not going to be here in the summer, and he's not going to be here for the majority of the rest of the season, then is it not more humane to have a gentleman's conversation and say, look, it's okay, we can have a mutual termination. Like, not a sacking, nothing like that, nothing disrespectful, but a conversation where if your intentions are not to be here, then, you know, Tottenham need to make plans. Morning. Tottenham need to you know, have prioritised our own best interests at the same time. And maybe there should be a, a kind of ripping the band the band-aid off idea. I don't want it to sound insensitive. But at the end of the day, if he's not going to be here in the summer, and he's not going to be here for most of the rest of the season, then like, wouldn't it be better to start the process now of looking for a new manager? and give that guy a bit of runway in which to land, to learn the team and salvage what could come from the rest of the season. That's not to say I don't have faith in Stellini. I think he's, he can do a, a good job. I think he's more than capable. I think he's got the chops. You know, his performances, I think, that he's dragged out of Tottenham have been pretty good. Marseille and the one the other day, Manchester City. I think that he'll, he'll be okay. But he's not a long-term solution. So I'm asking you guys, like, how do you feel about what I'm saying? I know it's going to offend some people for me to, to say, oh, let's just, you know, like, part company now. But I, I think he might welcome that conversation as well. You know? Just not sure. I'm not sure. And if that does happen, if there is that, com that conversation then we then have to have a conversation around philosophy, <laughs> consistent philosophy going forward, and making sure that whoever the next manager is, 
that he comes in with a style of football that is appeasing and pleasing on the eye to the fans and that then following that guy whoever comes in next after him and after him and after him or her by that point then they all need to be of a kindred spirit when it comes to the style of football and the philosophy and ideally the formation because there is a major difference between a central centre back in a three or someone who plays on the left or right of a four. There is a major difference between a right wing back and a right back. The best players in the world can probably adapt, but Tottenham don't have the best players in the world. And so it would be ideal if you could sign players that come on five year contracts for managers that have a general tenure of 18 months at Tottenham. It would be wonderful to be able to sign square pegs for square holes and that every cons every manager that comes in, ideally, can work with the players that the previous manager had at their disposal. And then you can just add more quality along the way rather than having to completely replace certain players that can do one job but can't do another. That's for another conversation. But I just wanted to get, get my thoughts out there on Conte. As I say, I wish him all the best. I hope that he is happy and healthy. And if his intentions are to stay at Tottenham Hotspur, then okay. I don't think they are. And on that basis, my, my best solution would be to have a conversation with him and see if he feels the same. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Like, share and subscribe. And as always, bye-bye.